What's up, Rust Friends? My name is Edie. And my name is Teddy. And you are listening to the Rust Friends podcast. And boy, oh boy, Rust Friend. <laughs> oh, man. I had to take a deep breath. I was like, oh, wait, relax. <laughs> relax. I feel like my body was just under constant stress this weekend. Oh, um, yes. Collision and all out great shows. It was great spending it with you and Sergio. I was so excited that I got to spend time with you guys. Likewise. I, I, I'm ready to, to talk about our weekend restaurant. Are, are you excited? Yeah, 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 me too. I think it was very chill. Mm -hmm. We had a good time. No one bothered us. So yeah, you know what? I'm ready to talk about it. It's so funny that you say that because <laughs> while we were sitting um, for Collision, no, for Collision, for the show, for All Out, mm -hmm. there was p men behind us and they were just mm -hmm. saying some crazy stuff right but at one point the guy behind me I believe his I think it was like his knee or something when he was getting up it hit my little bun I had a little bun in the on the back of my head and I'm like sir first of all you are too close to me right but second of all I got a flashback to when we were at a WWE show for the <laughs> for the Royal Rumble and a man fell on top of us do you remember yes I do remember of course <laughs> and I just remember <laughs> grabbing you at All Out, and I'm like, Rust Friend, I just had a flashback. I thought this man was going to fall on top of us. I was scared. Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, it. I think about that situation all the time. All the fucking time, because how the fuck do you as a grown-ass man happen to fall on two women? Like, literally, Rust Friend. <laughs> and you can't fall backwards? Why do you have to fall forwards? <laughs> I was stressed. And it's just it's his friends just watching him for me. Like, honestly, mm -hmm. that's that's what did it for me. I was like, no, I, these <laughs> motherfuckers. Uh. Oh, man. But yeah, okay, so just to reiterate, guys, nobody fell on top of us at All Out. But nobody I, fell on top of us, but I did just remember that one of them did spill beer on me. Oh, yeah. It it was a little bit. It wasn't like, a, oh, my God, he spilled his full cup. I guess, I guess he was sitting down, mm -hmm. and he probably tilted his cup forward yeah. and spilled some. And I did get a little bit on my on my sweater that I was wearing and a little bit on our armrest that you and I were sharing. Mm -hmm. um, so that really, I didn't like that. That really sucked. But he apologized. I was like, whatever. I felt a little bit on the armrest, but I figured since you didn't say anything, I figured like you were fine. Like it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that much. But you know how beer, even the littlest drop, you can smell it. Yeah. Like, it smells so strong. I was literally just telling Sergio about this because Sergio did get very angry and I was like, it's okay. He apologized. Sergio mean mugged the shit out of him. <laughs> but um, I was just like, no. Like, he apologized. I don't need any problems today. I'm enjoying the show. But it was just a little bit of beer and I was telling Sergio, I'm like, the whole night, I was able to smell my body spray until that. When yeah. that happened, just a little bit of beer, all I could smell was the fucking beer. Oh, oh my goodness. That's right. Yeah. We should have sanitized the whole back of his side, like the, the To be the chair. honest with yeah. you, we should have taken my saw and be like, you guys wanna you guys wanna act this way? Okay. <laughs> we'll act. <laughs> <laughs> well, first friend, you did spray. I did. Yes. You're so right. Yeah, You're you so did spray. Right. I remember because I was like, oh at least it smells nice. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you this like the beer stench just mm -hmm. got to me and I'm like no 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 good thing I have my body spray and yeah I did spray that you're so right because mm -hmm. mm -mm. mm -mm. and another thing that I will mention before we get into talking about the pay-per-view is again we're, we're, while we're on the men's behaviors why are men so creepy <laughs> oh my gosh please thank you for bringing that up well, genuinely why are men so creepy because when it's First of all, the disrespect of getting up during the women's match, like when yeah. the street fight verse um, with uh, Chris Statlander and Willow was announced, immediately everyone was getting up to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Men? F disrespectful, first of all. But then when they came back and then all the cameras on Chris Statlander or Mariah comes out, you know, in sky blue, they were saying the most inappropriate comments. First of all, these women, these beautiful, talented women would never look at you. Never look your way, especially when you can't even hold your beer straight. When you get up and I see butt crack, which I saw multiple of at the show. <laughs> I don't know if you saw any rest friend, but just pull your pants up, put some deodorant on and be respectful. I feel like that's not a lot to ask. No, it really isn't. To be honest, I'm against crack. So I'm so glad I didn't see any. <laughs> I'm anti-crack. Yeah. 
I, I feel like oh, friend. yeah the majority of us would be anti-crack I, yeah <laughs> the majority <laughs> you know what you'd be surprised crack enthusiasts restaurant wow okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we could be talking about different kinds of cracks of course yes 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 <laughs> <laughs> um i literally i kid you not i did ask sergio i'm like why is it a thing that men are always showing their butt crack like why why do, you, do they not feel the breeze like what's going on <laughs> yeah and with I mean, th- there's a way to be respectful. I know some people want to have conversations. There was a guy who was in front of us who, you know, we, he didn't talk to us the, the entire show, hadn't said anything, but like towards the end was like being conversational. Oh, yeah. And that was fine. We're like, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, oh my God, that's crazy. Like how, how did that happen? And you know, stuff like that. And just like enjoying the show, just having a conversation about the show. Mm-hmm. But these men are like, oh my God. She, yeah. Cameraman, like for, you know, being a, close to, you know, Chris Statland or whatever. And it's just a regular shot. Like, they mm-hmm. would have got the same shot if it was a guy just because it was Chris Statlander on the screen. Here the men go saying inappropriate things. And it's like, be so fucking for real, dude. Like, there's no way. Yeah, I don't understand how no tienen poquito vergüenza at all. Not even, like, zero shame mm-hmm. in their comments. And not only their comments, best friend, but you also were saying that they were coughing it up and burping it up. Oh back my there. god, best friend! <laughs> so there was a guy behind us. It's probably the same guy that spilled the beer on you. Honestly, he oh my was coughing his life away. Like you know that cough where you're like, I don't know about that one. That sounds a little sus. You know, it's not just a regular cough. His sounded like from within uh, the chest and some sickness. Like that's what it sounded like and that's I, terrifying and i remember i turned it on my best friend this man is coughing like something's happening oh and then he started burping so he was just having a, a whole moment a gassy night probably terrible and then i mean some guys behind us were also like this is the most i've ever drank at a show let's not do that <laughs> they were i want us it wasn't just one of them because i heard at least two of them but they were slurring their words by not even by the end of the show because the show wasn't even done yet. The pay-per-view wasn't even done yet. And they were already slurring their words. So I was like, man, these these fuckers are really drinking it up back there. Yeah. And it, I couldn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> and we're not saying not to have fun at the shows, not to enjoy your alcohol, but also be self-aware. You know, mm-hmm. I think that sometimes you kind of know, you're like, oh, I'm feeling like them a little too much. Maybe I'm just going to slow down a little bit. A lot of people don't know how to slow down. And a lot of people um, just go out and uh, specifically to the wrestling shows and will just party it up. And it's like, we are in the 100s. We cannot uh, afford to be fighting because we are all going to go downhill. Okay. Yeah, no, literally, <laughs> like the space, there's no space between anybody. Yeah. Oh, so, crazy. you know what, best friend? Some people drink. And act the fool, and other people drink and tell Cody Rhodes that they're kicking us out. That's crazy. So, be the, be the latter. Be be the latter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will talk about the end of the show, but let's start uh, prefacing this that we do not have the card in order because I know some people are going to be like, "Why did you guys start off with Will Osprey and Pack?" First of all, rude. The disrespect on Will Osprey and Pack. But <laughs> this is the order that we are talking about them in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I might have the order now. Do you? Yes, because I'm looking at it and I'm like, this looks pretty legit. MJF and Daniel Garcia started the show. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, okay, first friend, take it away. What was the first match of the night? <laughs> the first match of the night was MJF and Daniel Garcia. Yes, yes, it was. Yes. And um mgf came out first and we thought he was doing his regular schmegular entrance didn't we rest friend yeah um until he gets in the ring and next thing you know this humongous banner drops <laughs> almost in front of us but not really because we weren't in that section but it was a huge banner um yeah, what does the banner say rest the friend? banner said thank me later there you go i'm you know i'm honestly glad that it had that on both sides yeah. So everyone could see what it said because if it was just a plaid banner, then I would have been like mm, anticlimactic MJF. I expect, no, literally. I expected more from you, sir. <laughs> yes, I honestly was expecting for it just to say it in the front, so basically the camera can get it. But yeah. when I saw that we could read it, I was like, ooh. And even funnier nice. is that after everyone's shock of like, oh, a banner, it, which was huge by the way, it <laughs> literally took up like the whole first row. It dropped and it landed on all the people. <laughs> yes, it did. 
<laughs> and I, I was in those couple seconds, I was wondering what was gonna happen to it. And then you just see the AW crew go and get it. Running. Like nothing happened. Like nothing. Like we're just gonna pretend like it didn't just fall on all the fans. Jeez, it was so <laughs> funny. And then MJF is in the ring, he's chilling. Danny Garcia didn't even get an entrance. He was already in the mm -hmm. ring attacking MJF. Mm -hmm. And this match was nasty. <laughs> I'm just thinking about all the spit. That was a very gross match, yeah. And there's a lot of things. Like, you know, when it comes to blood, I guess it's a little bit different. But mm -hmm. literally, another bodily fluid such as spit, I feel like that's just so... That's disrespectful. <laughs> And it was so disgusting because it's not like we just saw spit. It wasn't just liquid. You saw like snot. Yeah, there was on snot. MJF. Yeah, <laughs> on coming out of Danny's nose, like oh, coming my out of goodness. Danny's nose. You're so right. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And overall, I thought it was a good match. I thought it was it, fun. Yeah, it was really entertaining. We were so into it. I feel like that was such a great match to start the card off with. Mm -hmm. And I guess my thing is like. Danny did such a great job throughout that whole match for mm -hmm. him to take the L at the end. I was like, oh, this is kind of anticlimactic. Like, I feel that MJF could have taken the loss because now where does Danny go from this? And this isn't the first time that we've seen Danny and MJF. Mm -hmm. So where like what happens now? I feel like they were trying to push a lot of the younger talent to also fight MJF and it just like didn't work. I remember Yuta. They had you to fight him and they did like a whole story. They had promos and even building up you and Danny individually. So now like what's what's next? I, I wonder too, especially because I feel like I'm, them choosing to have MJF and Danny Garcia have a match and then them be the first ones. It shows they're the pillars. They're two of a, uh, the AW pillars, right? Um, so I do wonder if they're going to continue it like you're saying or what's going to happen with Daniel Garcia? Because you're right. I think that match, he really, really showed what he can do. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like for the past couple of years that he's been in AEW, I mostly hear people are not the biggest fans of him. We're not the biggest fans of him until Saturday night's match. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Because Danny is such... Like, he's he's talented, but I do think... I do see where you're coming from of, like... Maybe some people, he just hasn't been able to win them over. And now we mm -hmm. know that he can go. He can absolutely do it. So yeah, I'm just kind I of... A... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I definitely think it's the character. Uh, a lot of people are not a fan of the dancing. So I don't do... care about the oh, dancing. I was say, do you like the dancing? I don't like it. I don't care, to or... be honest. I really, really don't care whether he does it or not, to be honest. I mean, for me, it's just part of his character anyway. Mm -hmm. So... um. Uh, what's it called? But him showing that it's not just about the dancing, that he can really go hard against someone like MJF, that's huge. I mean, we've been knowing that. If you've known Daniel Garcia in the ring, you know that Daniel Garcia can go. Yeah. But I don't think he's really gotten the opportunity in AEW until now. Because even when he was with Jericho, he was being, um, what do you call it, outshined by everyone else in that team. Yeah, and speaking of Jericho... Interestingly enough, this is a pay-per-view that didn't have Jericho involved at all. So mm -hmm. what do you think about that? That was like, what, maybe the first time we didn't hear his song? Yeah. yeah, we usually hear crazy. it all the time, yeah. Yeah, that is so crazy. Going forward, do you think this is a good option? <laughs> to not have Jericho? Absolutely. I, I noticed that more people of, are vocal about not caring to see Jericho on TV mm -hmm. anymore. So, and that's, I mean, I guess that does, doesn't say anything about Chris Jericho, no offense to him, but there's a lot of other people, you know? Honestly, yeah. I mean, a lot of people already see him as a legend. Like, if you're going to be working back there doing your magic that you can do back there, then stay back there. I don't know. <laughs> um, a lot of us are not entertained by him on TV anymore. So what can we say? Yeah. Well, <clears> what <throat> would you rate Danny and MJF overall out of 10? Out of 10? Yeah. Ooh, that's a solid eight and a half. I hate, Ooh. I, I hate, not that I hate, but I'm usually not a fan of when people are like, oh, I give this a 7.2 because I'm like, what the, what the hell is a point two? two? But for some reason, eight and a half just. <laughs> that makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> I like that. You know what? I, I will agree with you. I okay. think that 
we had a lot of fun watching the match. There was a yeah. lot of people rooting for Danny. Yes, there was people rooting for MJF, but the excitement for a possibility of a Danny Garcia win, I thought that was just cool to watch. So I yeah. didn't like how it ended with yeah. just the <laughs> the low blows always will get you. They'll always get yes. you. Yes. But yeah. yeah, no, I agree with you. 8.5, solid. So what's the next match for us, friend? Beautiful. The next match was the Young Bucks. Um against Blackpool Comeback Club. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Claudio kicks the Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta, of yeah. course. Um this was before we even knew what was how the rest of the show was going to go, right, restaurant? I know. Um Devastating. I was very it, this was a match that I freaking love that it was for the both of us. Yes. When they announced legit. this, I was super excited. I'm like, "Oh my god, they know we're going to be there." Yeah. This is it. <laughs> this is for us. Yeah, literally. Um, the match. Let me try to remember the match. Okay, the match was pretty entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to remember what the Young Bucks came out in because I remember what Claudio and y- Yuta. Yeah, Claudio came. Claudio and Yuta came out. They did their little, the little spiel. They the... were together. I honestly missed the person who I was during this match because oh. things will never be the same again. <laughs> They really won't. Did they do their little crab dance? <clears throat> they didn't do their little crab dance, which I was like, okay, they mean business. And okay. they came out in their trio's uh, titles, which I thought yeah. that they didn't, but Sergio confirmed it during the show. So yes. shout out to rest friend Sergio. He was very helpful this weekend in wrestling knowledge, <laughs> as he usually is. Always. Yeah. <laughs> as he right. Oh, is. and this match was for the AW World Tag Team Championships, by mm-hmm. the way. So... Man, it's just the Young Bucks can never, like, they, they, they never miss Rest Friend. No, absolutely not. I mean, and I found out afterwards that Nick's shoulder was injured. He <gasps> injured his that. shoulder on Friday, a collision. So he still went through this match. It says on here that the match was only 15 minutes. So I don't know how, to I don't know. Can you imagine what 15 minutes feels like to the people in the ring restaurant? I wonder if it goes by fast or I wonder if it goes by slow. I I would say it probably goes by slow. I mean, I don't know. I wonder. That's a great question that I'm going to ask wrestlers now because 15 minutes to me sounds like, eh, okay. But to them, it could be like, whoa, I got to be in there for 15 minutes. You've been there for 15 minutes with a, with a partner, with another team. And another we have team. so many spots that we have to do. Yeah. And then Nicholas with his sh- with his shoulder being injured. Yeah. Like, I couldn't even tell while they were performing. So mm-hmm. craziness. You know Wrestling. what? What did you think about the heat that the Young Bucks got? Because I felt like it was pretty standard. <laughs> pretty standard I, yeah. heat. Um because a lot I of people we... assume that because it's Chicago, that everyone hated Jack Perry, that everyone hated yeah. the Young Bucks, and, and everyone hated Hangman. That's not the, that's not the case. That's what I was going to say, Restaurant, because we are used to knowing what it's like to see our city against the elite. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it did happen in the beginning. They were getting booed, you know, after the whole everything that happened between with them. Yeah. Um, They got booed pretty, pretty loudly. You could tell they didn't probably want to be here because they weren't here for a couple days. I don't remember what dates exactly they weren't here for. Restaurant, talk to me about that bio. Because you were the one that you were like, rest friends. Did you see what the Young Bucks put up on Twitter as their bio? And I was like, rest friend, what are oh, you talking about? My God, and let then, me look for it. And then, and then you told me to go see what it was. It was so disrespectful. I hope they still have it up there because they might have changed it. No, they don't have it up there. That's where I'm like, let me look for it. Because... But I think they took a screenshot and they like shared it or something, or people were sharing it. It was about Chicago for sure. <laughs> Oh, here Are we go. I found it. it. Found I found it. it? Yeah. Okay. So it's <laughs> it says had to work in the building we hate in a city that sucks. Oddly, there's a plaque with our faces right outside of it. LOL. First all in should have been an LA TVH. <laughs> <laughs> I just okay, first of all, I just know they were giggling coming up with that. One thousand percent. But you made a great point because they didn't name Chicago. They didn't say Chicago. Mm-hmm. They said a building we hate in a city we hate. That's not in Chicago. That's not Chicago. Here's, That's Hoffman Estates. The State. now arena is not in Chicago. It's in Hoffman Estate, Estates, which is an hour away from Chicago. It's a whole suburb. Yeah. Um. What do you call it? So you made a great point, restaurant. I'm like, like 
I'm not going to, I'm just not going to get offended anymore. Yeah, no, it wasn't, it wasn't us. And <laughs> it, it was a, a great match between some members of the BCC and yes. the Bucks. So, I mean, I was excited to see them because we had seen them the night before in, what was it? It was like Claudio, Pack. Um, yeah, Danielson to... versus let me try to see. There's a, there was a lot of things because we went to both nights, guys. We went to Collision. Oh, it was Pack Danielson, Yura Claudio versus Okada, Jack Perry, and the Bucks. Which I'm telling you, people, when Jack Perry comes out, everyone starts chanting, "Oh, cry me a river." Which that's what Jack Perry said to CM Punk. So mm -hmm. you saying that just makes me feel like you're cheering for Jack Perry. And I feel like people don't remember that Jack Perry said that. <laughs> yeah, that's, I always, I mean, you did mention it. You did bring it up at the show. And I also wonder that too, like, are they singing for Jack mm -hmm. or against Jack? Because if they're trying to do it against Jack, it makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Plus, it's a very positive chant. It doesn't sound like you're throwing shade at him. Yeah, like they're not yelling like, fuck Jack Perry. Right. They're because literally they singing to him. You know what I'm very proud of? They did try starting CM Punk chants. Yes. And it didn't work. It never worked. And guys, let us know if you were able to hear any come through the TV. Like yeah. any chance. Because I know it only happened in All Out. I don't think it happened in Collision. I don't, I don't remember. remember. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, as soon as CM Punk's name started to be thrown out there, people were booing heavenly. And a lot of people might be thinking, oh, they were booing what was happening in the ring. No, we were booing the chants. <laughs> yes. Which very yes. respectful of Chicago. Some Chicago. Yes. Some Hoffman Estatesians. Some Chicago, some Hoffman Estatesians, some fans from other places in the world. I saw some people, a couple people that were, were from England. I was like, whoa. What? That's crazy. I saw two different English, uh, not English. What do you call them? British frogs? Mm -hmm. Interessante. Interessante. Um, but yes, we did say the Young Bucks defeated the Blackpool Comeback Club mm -hmm. there by pinfall, right? Yep. Um, and the match after that was Will Ospreay and versus Pac. Pac. Here we go. For the AW International, Ch International Championship. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Beautiful match. This match was Beautiful. insane. The energy alone before the match even started, everyone was extremely excited mm -hmm. for this match. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, so loud. The energy for Will Ospreay was insane. People were ready for him to face pack. And the crowd, just the bell rung. They're standing there inside the ring. And everyone is so excited, losing their minds, which Basically, we were excited too. Yes, they basically got a standing ovation before the show even started. Yeah. Like, everyone was on their feet except us. <laughs> <laughs> because we had a good everyone... view. I am an advocate of, like, if you have a good view, why stand up? Especially during a match. Especially during a match. So people who stand up and there's nobody standing up in front of them, you're a bitch. Okay? You <laughs> 100%. 100%. <laughs> if, if you wanted to stand up, get a floor seat. Match... <laughs> If you're standing throughout the match, you're a bitch. Yes. <laughs> but back to the back to the match because this was a very good match. Like this was a very entertaining match. Mm -hmm. And also obviously people were excited to see two dudes from England go against each other, right? Mm -hmm. A dream match for a lot of these people, you might say. Um it wasn't a dream match for me, but I was like, wow, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um before it started wrestling did you think or know that it was going to be violent? Were you like, this is going to be violent? Or were you just like, there's just going to be a lot of um, aerial I was, performances? I was ready for the aerial performances. I was ready right. for them to have a counter to each right. other's moves because they have the same style of wrestling. And Pac, I don't feel like, gets the credit that he deserves. Like, people know that he's violent, that he'll... Like, he's really a hard hitter and that he's quick. But I feel like he gets left out of, like, a lot of conversations of great wrestlers um, mm -hmm. with those type of capabilities. People always talk about Will Ospreay. People always talk about Brian Danielson, who, yes, the style of wrestling is different. But Pac is also probably one of the greatest wrestlers. Like, he is Absolutely. great. So, Absolutely. shout-outs to him. But, yeah, that's basically what the match was, was 
counter for counter. People were flying in the air, performing some crazy moves. And honestly, this match was more than I expected it was going to be. It was greater than I thought. Yeah, yeah, me too. I don't, I didn't have much expectations because, I mean, I know, I knew that it was going to be good. I knew that they would both deliver. I don't see, I don't ever see Osprey and Pac having a match together and it being a bad match. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, after the match, I was like, whoa, that yeah. was great. The, I'm, I'm telling you, I really enjoyed the energy mm -hmm. of it all, especially. Yeah, and... I guess a theme of the night was like these matches were going to make you feel either yes. like some type of heavy emotion because during this one, it was just like, oh, man, like it's crazy. Like I'm really here. I'm watching this and this is a fantastic match. And it was like you felt something in the air, in the arena, like some kind of emotion, some type of feeling. And I guess every match kind of gave you a different feeling, but you felt, which I don't know if people are going to understand what I mean by that. But do you get what I'm kind of saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do, best friend. Okay. Yeah, no, that's that's what I I thought it was. I thought it was great. And I can't wait to see it again, though. I don't think we're going to see it anytime soon because I feel like they're going to they're yeah. building up Osprey and Ricochet, which I don't know when we're going to get that. Maybe Thanksgiving since AW is coming <laughs> back and we try to get tickets. That's a whole other story. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. But <laughs> but yeah, I don't know where I mean, Pac is I, also busy doing hateful things now. So hateful things exactly. I don't I don't know. Let's let's Evil move on, Rest Friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, I think if they give us Osprey and Ricochet for that Thanksgiving show, Rest Friend, we would be very lucky. Yeah. I don't think so. I though. think they'll save it for a pay per view. But, yeah, I think so too. Um but yeah, a uh, great, 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 great match, great mm -hmm. energy around the match. I wish people were like this for all matches, because like you said, the fact that people stand up for the women's matches, that's the type of energy that Chris and Willow deserved. But we're going to talk about them next. Yeah. Um, you know what? Let's just talk about them now. Yes. <laughs> Chris Statlander comes out with Stokely Hathaway, rest friend. And I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't notice it. Sergio pointed it out to me that you know how Chris and Stokely are always doing goofy shit. Mm -hmm. um, but Sergio said that Chris kind of lifted Stokely for him to get on the ring steps. Stop it. <laughs> like, what? I missed it. I didn't see that. No. Um, Chris Stanley Chris there, first of all, before we talk about the match, she came out looking amazing. She, she looks so good. <laughs> I loved the gear. It was giving me cowgirl vibes. And then I saw on her stories this morning that I don't know if she was going for like a Christina Aguilera look, I think. Oh, maybe. And so I'm like, okay, that makes sense. It was so good. That was such a great look. I was like, oh, man. Oh, she looks so good. Um, and then Willow comes out looking cute as always. Mm -hmm. Again, I loved the energy, but you can tell that she was ready. She was ready to start that match because usually she comes out happy with like, you know, the clapping. We were clapping, but there was nobody dancing. Willow was, was not no dancing. <laughs> She was ready to get in that ring. She was so ready to get in that ring and get her justice from her ex-bestie. Because, Rush Friend, how would you feel if you had to fight your bestie because she just turned her back on you like that? That's crazy. Could you imagine? It's like, now I got to go fight this bitch in a street fight. like In a, <laughs> in a Chicago street fight out of all kinds of matches. Yeah. Chicago street fight. No, it's... This was one of my favorite matches of the night. And it's probably the match that I remember the most of, yeah. like, what happened... But, man, Chris Statlander coming out and then Stokely coming out shortly behind her with a whole trash can full of items. Like, during the match, it was like, man, I guess, <laughs> what are we going to do here? What's happening? But both of the looks went crazy. I loved Willow's hair. Yes. I loved her her pants. She had, um like, a white, like, T-shirt or, like, a tank top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that said, like, smile anyways. She just looked so hardcore. Both of them looked like they yeah. were ready for a fight, and I was scared. <laughs> Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Okay, we all know this was a street fight, right? It was a mm -hmm. Chicago street fight match. But there was... I don't know how to describe that this match was so violent, yet so clean. Like, I remember a lot of what happened in the match. Yes! They didn't... They didn't... They didn't try too hard to look hardcore. They did... They did enough to it look was, hardcore. It was done, like, so gracefully. Such a violent yes. match. Which yes. is beautiful in itself, right? I, yes. I want to talk about one of the moments where, like, we were gagged. Was when the thumbtacks were brought out, rest friend. Thumbtacks yes. were sprayed on the floor. And we were like, oh, no. Something's happening. Something's happening. And you always, like, your heart always 
beats a little bit faster because you're like, who's going to be the first person to get thrown onto these tags, right? But Chris Statlander did like a, a scissor kick kind of mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. landed into a splits into the thumbtacks for us, friend. What yep. was your reaction? I mean, I, I was there. But tell the people what your reaction was. Are you kidding? The immediate thought of thumbtacks on your thighs, on your butt, and who knows where else? Because that was a split on thumbtacks, best friend. <laughs> also, she, the the accuracy brave. that she, the accuracy that she had to have to land in the right place. Yeah, and you know, a lot of things. I mean, sometimes these matches can get out of hand because you're not in the right position. You know, there's always the the idea that something can happen you know mistakes happen injuries can always happen so the fact that she landed in the right place that was just close enough the thumbtacks to the cooch like yes. without him like art art yes beautiful no literally beautiful because we saw the moment she brought out the bag with the thumbtacks we mm-hmm. saw the moment that she poured them out mm-hmm. and when she went for that kick and willow moved like it was literally the perfect spot like yeah. it's so crazy i look up to wrestlers so much for their will to I don't know how they practice these things I don't know if they practice them or they just talk about them and write them down on paper but the way they execute all these things together it's crazy to me because it's not just one of them right it, it has mm-hmm. to be everyone that's in the match and usually like when it came well, when it came to Chris and Willow both of them together executed everything beautifully like that was such a beautiful match yeah and uh, another moment that happened almost like right in front of our right in front of us was there was a table that was set up by the ramp and chris and willow were go- you know, going up the ramp they're fighting there's kendo sticks um willow hit chris with a light tube which was very mm-hmm. gcw of them which <laughs> we'll talk about the overall like violence of the pay-per-view later but um because a lot of people did not like it and mm-hmm. I'm like, that's, uh, I don't know about that, but we, we we can make that argument later. But that light tube spot was incredible. And then Chris Statlander um, held on to, to Willow. She kind of like speared her from the ramp onto this table. The table, of course, broke in half. Insane spots were happening. And mm-hmm. it's crazy because I'm telling you, like, this is for me, like the most memorable because I love these girls so much. And it was just so fun. You were like, oh, what's going to happen next? Yes, I, I agree. I just remembered that. Didn't didn't they also destroy a commentator's table? Oh, my God. It was yes. them, right? Yeah, they power bombed Willow onto it, I believe. Was it, it Willow? Was, or- okay. Chris. I, I do, but it was Willow. It was Willow, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, no, they did so much, yet... <sighs> I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how to describe the, it, but it was such a beautiful clean match to me. The um the time where Chris Statlander grabbed like the the chain and the straps and they they were both like tied together and she did her yes. finisher to to you know kind of tap Willow out and she had the chain in between her mouth. That looked horrifying. That's a dog collar, isn't that what yes, that's called? I think so. Like, yeah. Okay. But it was like for okay. the like in the hands. I don't know. It mm-hmm. was crazy. Mm-hmm. <sighs> crazy, crazy match. But you you bring it up about uh, the fact that some people didn't like it. I did see that as well. And here's my thing. I will never understand fans that complain when they watch AW and there's violence. Um, because people are always arguing that WWE is better or AW is better. You know, they're always arguing about AW and WWE. Yet when AW does something totally different that obviously WWE would never do, they want to compare the both of them. Like, yeah. oh my God, this is so horrible, so disgusting. This is why WWE is superior, this and that, because there's no blood. They don't try too hard. And it's like, it, this is a whole different company. Like, they do things in there that you're probably not going to like. That's what AEW is literally about. Why are we always complaining? Like, this is what their fourth, fifth year as a company, and people are still complaining about the violence in these matches sometimes. And like, you know what's what's crazy? You know, AEW has said that they are the alternative. They are a different place, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it was proven in this pay-per-view. And what surprises me is that, you know, a lot of people were upset with the violence which i i truly get because when we talk about the main event if i had not gone to a gcw show before i would have been mortified at the things that were happening so i i totally get it because i was mortified at the first gcw show that i went to that was like a death death matches the whole show so mm-hmm. <laughs> so i was shook the whole time but um 
see, I even lost my train of thought now because I'm thinking about people <laughs> jumping onto light tubes. All the blood. All the blood and just the, the white poof of, of the light tubes. Craziness. Craziness. But, um, oh, but, you know, back to WWE. Um, people at WWE shows will always be chanting, we want tables, we want ladders, we want chairs. Like, they want the violence. Yeah. So when they got the violence as an AEW, yes, they're two different crowds. People are like, oh, this is too crazy. You're never going to get sponsorships. Um, why, you know, why, why do you have people doing this? This is unnecessary. This is a different show. This is a different company. Each show stands on their own. You can't, we can't keep comparing them. They're run by different people. There's different mm -hmm. athletes on each of them and they'll have different contracts. Like if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. And that's it. It's, it's literally one of the main reasons that uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny talked about why they wanted a... I mean, uh, the Young Bucks and Cody talked about why they started All In, why they did All In, and why they agreed to start a whole new company with Tony because it was something different. A lot of these people weren't going to make it in WWE with the style that they wrestle in because they like the violence or the aerial stuff that they're allowed to do in AEW that yeah. they knew they weren't going to be allowed to do in WWE, you know, or they would, or maybe it was going to be allowed, but it wasn't going to be popular with the crowd. That is the reason why they wanted to start a whole different mm -hmm. company. And the fact that people don't get that, the fact that people still want to complain about that is kind of weird. It's so weird. Like go watch WWE for what you like it for and go watch AEW for what you like it for. And, or if you don't like either of them, don't watch them. Exactly. Like, I, don't, I don't understand. Yeah. Well, and when it comes but, to, to a match like this with Willow and Chris, like they, they did the work so beautifully and yes. just shout outs to them because they yes. really worked. And let me tell you, there was a lot of women in the crowd who were so excited, mm -hmm. so thrilled into this match. Fuck all the men who were getting up to go and pee during this match. Literally, you can go trip up a step or something because this was not the vibe. You could have, I mean, you look at all of the matches that were on the card, pee between the commercials, pee between the little the breaks in the entrances. Like, you better run, but not during it's, the women's match. It's the fact that it's like the, it, it, the, the, what was I getting? Oh my God, I can't even talk. The moment they announced the match was next, people started getting up. It's like, it so what? It was so rude. But then they'll, they'll be the so first ones to come on and be like, oh, my God. It's Chris Dallander. Oh, my God, Mariah May. She's not going to look at you, sir. Your fly's undone. You didn't even wash your hands coming out of the bathroom. <laughs> Ew. You're <laughs> so right. <laughs> All righty. Next match. <laughs> next match. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> um, the next match was the four-way match for the AEW Continental Championship. Oh, and my we God. Had, <laughs> we had Kasushka Okada against Mars, 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 <laughs> Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy, and Konosuke Takeshita. Period. Um, of course, Okada defeated them, right? If not, we would have had a different champion. Mm -hmm. But, rest friend, before this match started, mm -hmm. you knew, okay, you knew about this match, right? Because it was on the card. Yeah. Two out of four of these guys are your favorites. They're Absolutely. like your top favorites. Yeah. How? What were the feelings? I was stressed. Explain. I was stressed <laughs> because I love Takeshita. Takeshita is my number one right now. Like, mm -hmm. that is the star. Oh. I always say that he's always getting the short end of the stick. And I feel like being with Don Callis, yes, has allowed him to be in a storyline. But, like, he doesn't need Don Callis. Takeshita is a star by himself. And he goes out there every week and he proves it. And you know what's crazy? People hate Don Callis so much. But they love so Takeshita. Much. Takeshita, yeah. the cheers that he was getting, insane. And... These are not like, oh, this is not like out of the blue that Takeshita is being cheered because he gets cheered in every match that he's in. People wanted him to win that. I think that was a ladder match that happened like not too recently in a, in a pay-per-view. People mm -hmm. were very for Takeshita winning that. And sadly, it didn't happen, but I'm ready for a Takeshita championship reign. So when it was announced that Takeshita and Orange Cassidy, who, by the way, such a nice guy. I got to interview him for, for my job really sweet 10 out of 10 guy so i was like oh man and orange is in this so yeah. i was like internally struggling but i knew this was going to be so so good because the way that all of these men in the ring work is insane you had mark briscoe in there who is just craziness in a bottle yes, <laughs> I guess literally. That's, that's the best way to describe him <laughs> and then you have okada 
who people will argue is the greatest wrestler in the world. You know, Absolutely, his yeah. name and Kenny Omega are, th- are thrown in there. Um, but this one, I was like, this is going to be good. We should have got some little palomitas for this best friend because I know we would have been like, oh, my God, what's <laughs> happening here? Like, we would have been, oh, craziness. <laughs> I, I, yes. Um, it's also the energy that, that, that this match brings because, okay, four amazing guys that we knew were going to deliver yeah. and give us a great match. But also, like, Okada's hilarious. Okada, you know, he had put on his stories that he was going to have a match against his four bitches. <laughs> I mean, three Which was, bitches, I'm sorry. That was it crazy. Was... The fact that he went and edited the own, the the little show flyer. Mm-hmm. So he only kept his name, scribbled out everyone else's name, and wrote bitches. bitches. That's crazy. <laughs> um, He's hilarious. But the thing, and I don't, I don't want to put any wrestler down, but to me, there's a couple wrestlers mm-hmm. that... Also, as soon as you see them, that they bring out that star power. Like they just they just have that look that like mm-hmm. they're freaking stars. And for me, Okada is one of them. He's one of the main guys that he comes out and I'm immediately like, <gasps> like takes my breath away a little mm-hmm. bit. And I'm not even an Okada girl. Like I love him. I love him so much. Could you he's imagine amazing, if we were he's... Okada girls? Huh? Could you imagine if we were Okada girls? Like he would be serving. I- I mean, I think I'd be obsessed. I'm not going to lie to you because the moment he comes out, I'm like, holy shit. First of all, he's gorgeous mm-hmm. to me. I think he's a beautiful man. And then, I don't know. He just, he holds that, like, he's so star f- power. He's so funny. And he's so crazy talented that mm-hmm. you just, you have to love Okada. Mm-hmm. And yeah. even though he's with the elite, you think he would get booed. Absolutely not. People love Okada. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, people don't care that he's with D.B. It's still like Okada. And s- side note, we got Okada Bucks at this show. Yes. Shout outs to Okada. You didn't have to do that. And here we go. <laughs> you, did, you didn't have to make it rain on us, but you still did. It didn't rain directly <laughs> on us, but we got the Bucks. <laughs> we did get the Bucks. <laughs> um, but yeah, great match. Mm-hmm. I think um, I definitely think it belonged there. Mm-hmm. How long, how long was that one? Oh, that one says it was also 15 minutes. I don't remember it going by too fast. Mm-hmm. When he won, I was like, oh. You're like, oh, this okay. is already That's done. It. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about a specific moment where I think it was Takeshita standing in the ring and Okada standing in the ring. The audience lost their minds. Like, they were ready for this. I'm ready for this, too. I don't know when it's going to happen. But I'm telling you, Takeshita needs to be pushed. And I honestly think that, well, I thought the title was going to change. I was like, maybe not Orange, but maybe Takeshita. Because mm. Orange has, he's the longest reigning champion um, as the All-Atlantic, now the inter- now the international championship. But, um, man, craziness. I, I it, it could happen in restaurant. I'm ready for it. I, I do wonder who he's going to drop that to. Because let me tell you. Mm-hmm. And New Japan, when Okada had to drop a title, mm-hmm. it wasn't pretty for his fans. Like, from his fans, I mean. His mm-hmm. fans weren't too happy anytime he had to, you know, lose. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wonder how that's going to be an AEW for a title that's not even the main title. Mm-hmm. But I wonder who he's going to lose that against and how the fans are going to feel. I um, wonder if it's like a singles match against a guy like Takeshita maybe I feel like people would be fine with it. I mean, I think that was the better way to do it if he was to lose it was in a fatal four-way because he didn't have to be the one who got pinned. It could have been anyone else. So it's interesting to see how how they'll take that championship off of him. I don't think they'll do it anytime soon after it didn't happen this week. So it's just going to be interesting. But crazy spots in this match too. You know, the energy that Orange brought into it, that Mark brought into it, fantastic spots. But... I feel like there was, mm, I'm going to take it back. I was going to say there's no match that was not a banger. Um, But there, (laughs) for me, there was. Um. was was, Okay. (laughs) And it's not, it's not the one that I think you're thinking of. Um, Well, there's two that I'm thinking. Okay. So it might be. Okay. 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 Uh, We're probably, yeah, it's probably the same one. (laughs) Which we're, we're going to talk about both of them next. Um, We also haven't rated all the matches, but I guess we'll do that at the end, Rush Friend. Oh, yeah, yeah. We only rated the first one. So oh, we'll okay, rate, hold on. Let's, let's we'll rate, rate the other all of them when we're done or no? Yeah, let's rate them now. Okay, okay, because we didn't rate the Young Bucks. We didn't rate the Tag Team Championship one. Oh, with Yura and um, Mario? Yes. Um, I wouldn't I'll give take that, that one was, a six. Yeah, I was going to say that. I wouldn't put that one too high. Probably like a six, yeah. 
not because it was bad, but it was also wasn't. There was just the, so the many star of the yeah, show. There was also just so many other moments that happened that you're just like those were just crazy worthy of higher numbers. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. Um, AW International Championship oh, this, match. This was like an eight point five for me. Eight point five. Okay, yeah. I do give it a four nine. Okay, I do. It, it, was, it was that good. It was I feel good. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I th- I think that's pretty good, right? A nine. Yeah. Um, Chicago Street Five, ten oh, out of ten. Ten out of ten. That was I literally the amount of YouTube clips that I've watched back, and even what I recorded on my phone. Like I've watched that so yes. many times. It's just so so good, and I feel like that's yeah. gonna be one of the most memorable moments in uh, AEW Women's History. Is like that street fight. It was so good. I agree. I can, can you imagine having a Chicago street fight and it blew like it wasn't good? It, you know, it probably would have sucked, but no. Yeah. Like the fact that they, that was a beautiful, amazing, great match, and it was a Chicago street fight that they executed very, very Perfectly, well. Perfectly, yeah. Beautiful. Chef's kiss to both of them. <laughs> Hugs, kisses. Hugs, shout kisses. outs to them. Yes, not to Stokely. Not to Stokely. <laughs> Get your weird ass out of here. <laughs> um, the four way match for the AEW Continental Championship. I won. I'd probably give that one a seven, seven and a half, maybe. Okay, I would say probably an eight for that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, you, two of your guys yeah, were two on of my there, faves so. are in there. I have to be high. <laughs> Before we move on, I do have a question. Okay. Um, this is more like me interviewing you because you are the interviewer. Shout out to um. Which one. How did it feel, like, seeing Orange Cassidy in there when you had just days before interviewed him yeah. in person, yeah. treated you beautifully? Like, I love so I nice. love the energy that, that, you know, the little bit that you shared with me. Yeah. I absolutely loved the story of you interviewing him. I, like, so for those of you who don't know, I do a lot of interviews for work. But I get so much anxiety before I mm-hmm. do the interviews. So they told me I was going to interview Orange maybe like three or four days before I actually did it. And those four days were absolutely terrible for me because <laughs> though I was prepared, I had my questions. My anxiety was through the roof restaurant. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't sleep. I was anxious and nervous. Like we my my family and I, we went out to breakfast the Saturday before. I think I was interviewing him on Tuesday Mm-hmm. So we went to breakfast and I remember going into it, walking in there and I was shaking like that's oh how bad, goodness. which is interview anxiety. Like why? Like I had the questions. It's something that was out of my uh, like I can only control so much. So I don't know why I was like worrying so much, but I get so nervous before every interview. Like I pace. I am like constantly like writing things down. I'm like rereading my questions. When I, when I write my questions, I write my name at the top so I don't forget it. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, so cute. So, and, and then it only like, I'm only relaxed after like the first question because I know that like, after I asked the first question because like I know the person's already there. I know like how, you know, I've handled them already of like, you know, setting them up, made them comfortable. Like I always get them water. I always go buy water bottles for our, um, for whoever I interview just because mm-hmm. we like we don't have water at the station so I just I go and get some water um, and they always appreciate it they're always so nice everyone has always been so nice to me that's gone from AEW so very thankful for them but seeing Orange we even saw him in collision and I'm like oh, I always get yeah. like so excited because you're like oh my god I just talked to this person and now I get to see them work and it's it's a different feeling than like usually seeing them come out and have their match without having like talked to them. I guess I could compare it to like, you know, when we do like meet and greets and then yeah. then afterwards we'll see them. You're just like, oh my God, I just met them. They were so yeah. nice. They were so cool. And now I get to see them in the ring. So it's kind of like that feeling. Um, but man, it's it was just so great. And he was he was the sweetest. He was so nice and kind. I got to give him a friendship bracelet that I made, um, yeah. a Chicago one. And he was he was so um he was so nice about it. He's like, oh, thank you so much. He's like, I always need more more friendship bracelets. So it, it was just nice to see him. And now I'm fully stress-free. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute. Because, okay, first of all, restaurant, you're better than me. Because I would be like, y'all don't know him like I do. Like, <laughs> none of you know him like I do. <laughs> like, first of all, what do you guys know about him? <laughs> Literally, restaurant. 
But also, I get you because, I mean, I get nervous and literally shaky when I'm going to meet my favorite wrestler, one of my yeah. favorite wrestlers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I can't, I could only imagine how you feel. Um, but the fact that you don't show it mm. is so crazy. So, like, you're saying all of these things of how nervous you were, mm. how, how shaky you were days before just going to breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, on the interview, if you look like the total professional, I'm not saying the professionals don't get nervous, but best friend, you don't show it at all. Best like, friend, you are so you kind. Thank you so much. make it look like it's the easiest thing in the world to talk to someone that you've been watching on TV and admiring for years. Thank you, best friend. I'm sweating on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you, I'm sure when they leave, you're like airing your whole body. Thank God. Like, After they leave, sometimes I'm like, oh, thank God I made it through. <laughs> No, that is so cute, though. I, I love that for you. Yeah. Well, I, I thank you, restaurant. I, I appreciate it. And um, I do uh, also, like, sometimes I let you guys know. Sometimes I don't let you guys know in, in mm -hmm. like, our group chat of who I'm interviewing or if I'm doing it. Just because, like, you know, sometimes I feel like I don't want to jinx myself of, like, oh, if I don't, if, yeah. they're not, if they're not in here yet, they're not in here yet and anything could happen. So, yeah. um there's like a saying in Spanish or something. I don't, I don't, I'm not remembering it right now, but it's like, I don't want to jinx it. That's, I mean, I'll look up what the phrase is in Spanish and I'll let you guys know later, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are always so helpful because sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to talk to this person. Do you guys have any questions you want me to ask? And like, I'll always include those questions into like whatever my other questions are. So you guys are always also super helpful in, in the group chat. So thank you guys for always helping me and always being excited for me because you guys could literally be like, oh, here comes Iridian again. Fuck her. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please, rush friend. I've never told you to shut up, but shut up. We would never. <laughs> First of all, you know that whole group is obsessed with you, the whole group chat. We love you so fucking much. We look up to you so fucking much. So absolutely not. And also, let me say, you can see, not that you ever were bad at it, but you can see the the improvement. You don't ask for help as much as you do anymore. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're coming out with is you. And the fact that Orange Cassidy complimented you on that too, it's like... That was so nice of him. So shout out to you, Russ Friend. Because Orange Cassidy at the end, being in an Orange Cassidy way, he was like, oh, I've never talked, what did he say? I've never talked this much before in an interview. And I said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry for making you talk. And he's like, no, I guess they were good questions. I said, was that a compliment? <laughs> no, I was like... He's like, let me see. They were great questions. So thank you, Orange. <laughs> yeah, best friend. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks, best friend. But next match, which we don't have much to say about, right? But Mercedes Monet <laughs> defeated Hikaru, <laughs> defeated Hikaru Shida <laughs> uh, for the AWTBS championship. Mm -hmm. And the reason I still don't have much to say is because we are going to be very upfront and honest. Um... We just weren't fully uh, invested. And inv there you go. Mm. Because I felt like it was a little slow. How did you feel? I, not to say that we don't love Mercedes and, and Sheeta. Absolutely on, no. Because we absolutely love them. But I don't know. This match was kind of weird for me. I was like, some yeah, it, it seemed like it was very slow after this you know, fatal four way, like the excitement had kind of died down a little bit. And I mean, we were still excited to see them in the ring, but it's like, as the match progressed, I was like, Oh, it's just not hitting like all the other matches were. And I don't know what it was. Um, but for me, I, I love Mercedes, but I feel like I'm still waiting for her to have a banger and not to say that she didn't like put on a great show with, Stephanie Vacker because she absolutely did put on a banger with Stephanie Vacker and then Stephanie you know decided to go to WWE so like that's that's another story but for just I mean I don't know people did not like the recent match that she had against Britt Baker and they mm -hmm. were shitting on Britt Baker and they're like this is crazy um but now with this other match people are like oh wait Mercedes also didn't have a good match here and it was against Sheeta so, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what it was. I don't know if the, the flow is not flowing yet. But there were some spots that I was like, oh, I don't know about that. And it's just maybe the finisher throws it off for me because <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't like that finisher. I was always super excited when she was doing the bank statement because I'm like, here we go. Like, there's just so much, there's, there's a buildup there. Yeah. And you know if she's going for that, that the person's, the other person is losing. So 
I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. It was kind of off for me. What did you think? No, I completely agree with you. I thought it was a little slow. Mm -hmm. And the reason I feel like that is because I do feel like it took long. Mm -hmm. Um, It was one of the moments where, this is going to sound so fucked up, but after a while when I wasn't entertained, I was like, hopefully this is one of those matches that are going to go a little quick just because... There was, I didn't see the chemistry or I didn't mm. feel the chemistry between the both of them. I absolutely love Hikaru Shida. And I respect Mercedes Monet and what mm. she can do in the ring. I really do. Um, it's, but I just... No. I, I, to be honest with you, there's nothing I can say about the match that I was like, oh, this is great. Because, again, like you said, the finisher, I agree with you. I'm not a fan of the finisher either. And I was rooting for the finisher in the beginning when she... Um, when she first put it up on like social media, yes, yeah. and when she did it in New Japan, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't remember if it was for start, if she did it in Stardom mm-hmm. or in New Japan the first time. I think it was in New Japan, um, in a New Japan ring. When she did it, I was like, I like the idea of it. I think it's something that's like, it's okay, different. I love when women come up with something different and cool, right? But is, is she's not executing it well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't look believable. Yeah. Um, and especially the way she did it on Sheeta and then she beats her. I was like, mm, that was weird. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to know what people's thoughts are on this because there's Mercedes fans who are very like Mercedes. Mercedes is great. Mercedes is fantastic. And they're not seeing a lot of like, it's it's not hitting. Yeah. And that's no... I feel that's no shade to Mercedes. I feel like people are, people are going to be like, I'm going to unsubscribe because you guys don't like Mercedes. We love Mercedes, okay? Like, I have a photo op with Mercedes. I have Sasha Banks Bedazzle t-shirts. Like, mm-hmm. love her. I'm just, like, kind of upset that it's not hitting for me in AEW. And, I, I mean, I don't know what it is. I, I, I don't know what it is, but... yeah. Maybe she needs a full heel heel turn because yes, she is with Camille, but I feel like I need her to be the bad guy. And that's what I loved about Sasha Banks was that she was like, I don't care. I'm going to say all of this, but I'm going to fight you in the ring and I'm going to be fantastic. And that's what it was giving. And now it's like with the CEO chants and the theme song. I don't know. I don't know. It's not working for me. It's not clicking. I don't know either. I I really don't know either. I mean, I think about Sasha Banks and NXT, and it's like I absolutely was in love with her matches in NXT. Um, They're the way as well, but I do have the most memories of her in NXT, and that's what I was expecting in AEW, to be honest with you. I was expecting those Bayley matches, you know? I was expecting for her to come out with that same, like, energy, and I wonder if it's because a lot of the fans are not behind her. I wonder if Mm. Part of that kind of gets to her in the ring. I don't know. I I have no idea. She seems like a total professional, and obviously she's been doing this for years. Um, I am still going to root for her. I absolutely yeah. am. I'm always going to root for her as long as, you know, she doesn't do something or say something shitty. Mm-hmm. But I'm rooting for her. I hope that she can bring to AEW what she wants to and what we're expecting from her. Because, yeah. I mean, it's, we're just expecting a little bit more, right? We just want to be entertained with her matches that's it she has Um, two championship belts right i need her to be the best in that roster so i i'm ready for for the next match i don't know who it's going to be but i know she can deliver like we've Mm -hmm. seen her deliver so i just need her to go out and have the most fantastic match um but this one with sheeta i don't think it, it was it and that's probably not it's not it's not their fault so um well, I mean, we'll they, they tried, right? Yeah. They, did, they really did do their best, and it wasn't terrible. Mm-hmm. They did what they had to do. It just wasn't entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, this match for me was like a five. But the looks were a ten. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes. I, I love starting that. Starting off with Hikaru Shida's gear, I think she comes out with the coolest, coolest, coolest looks. Yeah. Um, something that I'd wear for sure. What, what Chris Statlander and Hikaru Shida come out in, mm-hmm. the, yeah, I love Stylish. Shit that I would wear if I could. But um, I give this match... Ooh. I give it a five. I'm going to give it a six. Okay. Be- because the wrestling was okay. The wrestling was okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but next match. A match that we were also very excited for. Mm-hmm. Brian Danielson 
versus Jack Perry for the AEW World Championship. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, before we talk about this match. Um, okay. So Jack Perry recently released merch by himself, not mm. through Pro Wrestling Tees, not through Shop AEW. And it's so good, Rest Friend. I ordered a t-shirt. It's mm-hmm. like, do you remember when um, he came out in that jacket? And I'm like, oh my God, that jacket would be so cute if they sold it. Well, he is selling it. It's like, um, it's a hoodie now. And I was like, oh my God, that's literally so, so cute. So let okay. me show you what he's selling. Um, because it's genuinely adorable. I'm going to put it in the camera. But okay. um, it's like a white t-shirt. It's like a black okay. t-shirt with a white collar. Oh, and, I see the white collar. Yeah, and it says uh, Scapegoat Bus Co., his little company. And then okay. he's selling hats and you know regular t-shirts and keychains. And uh, he's selling that jacket. In the front, it says scapegoat. And in the back, it's got that logo. So, like, that oh, was he was wearing. Oh, the bomber jacket. Yeah. And it okay. literally is so cool. And it's only pre-ordering for one week. So, I ordered my t-shirt. It was 30 bucks. And yeah. I'm like, this is this is so cute. Like, where is pro wrestling? <sighs> We're going to talk about the merch at the end of this. Let me write this down because, oh, my God. Merch. Okay. Thanks for reminding me, restaurant, while I was on my tangent. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, the t-shirt is so, so cool. It's on scapegoatshop.com. Shout out to Jack Perry because you are bringing the merch that we want. This is bullshit, pro wrestling tees. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we keep getting the ugliest fucking shirts. I swear to God. The only good thing about the merch stand was Mel Coleman's art, which was autographed by the wrestlers. Everything else was four ugly, all in or all out t-shirts and then one pink Darby Allen sweater which didn't even have Darby's face showing it just had the front of it and then you had an $80 belt buckle uh, a $750 title one pack of AEW trading cards what the fuck is going on why don't you have anybody on your card merch up here I need AW to hire wrestling wind down because I get way, way more compliments when I wear my wrestling, my wrestling wind down merch yeah. than I ever have with my AW merch. I've never gotten a compliment for AW merch. Mm-hmm. None of my friends have ever been like, oh, Teddy, what a cool t-shirt you're wearing. Yeah. All the compliments I've gotten is for from my uh, wrestling wind down merch. Yeah. So I don't know. AW needs to get it together, seriously, because I 100% agree with you. Not only is the merch not like you go on the website and it doesn't look like something you would want to wear all the time, the designs that they have on their t shirt, mm. but also when you go to the shows and there's not much for you to, you know, to, there's not many selections. I mean, mm-hmm. what are you doing? What's going on? What's, what's the end goal here? Because we're not wanting to buy your merch. A lot of other people are not wanting to buy your merch. What's going on? You know what they should do? is take one of their little print pressing machines and actually make the t-shirts there and be like, hey, we don't have anything up here. Here's our catalog. If you want to look and wait, it'll be 20 minute wait for a shirt, but you can go and get your food, go and get your drinks and come back and pick up your merch because you're literally one hour tease. That's what it is. (laughs) You're supposed to make the tease. I'm so confused. And I mean, it would be crazier to say at every other show, they have shitty merch. But in Chicago, where your headquarters are at, where they can literally drive the boxes down, that's mm-hmm. fucking bullshit. Mm-hmm. Bullshit. And I'm wearing my Bad Bitches Love Yuta. Bad Bitches for Yuta shirt right now. Speaking of wrestling wind down. Yes, while we're on the topic of wrestling wind down. Like, it's just so frustrating. It's so no, frustrating. It is. it is because we're a bunch of nerds. Not only do we love the wrestling, but we want to represent our favorites. And we want to represent them the right way by having cool T-shirts, cool merch. And that's, I haven't bought a T-shirt from AW Pro Wrestling Tees in a while. That's and the, how bad it is. The only time that I get compliments on those, on any wrestling T-shirt is when I bedazzle, bedazzle them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Craziness. But shout out to Jack Perry for doing something different. Watch them be like, made by Pro Wrestling Tees. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, um, <sighs> I need to see who who made these. But honestly, the scapegoat jacket looks really, really cool. I'm going to send it to you, restaurant. Okay, restaurant. Yes, please. Literally, I was like, this is this is cute, Jack. Okay, sir. But <laughs> he's getting really creative. First, he made that belt by himself, by hand. And now mm. he's making merch. 
Mm, interesting. That was insane. Interesting. Beautiful belt. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot about that wrestling. Thank you for him. reminding me. He's he's really he's really killing it. And getting back to this match, I honestly thought. I always get scared because I'm like, please don't boo him. He's so great. He's one of my favorite Nepal babies. And like, you guys love Jack Perry. Stop, stop hating. You know, you love Jack Perry. But of course, it's Brian Danielson. Rest we were singing the hell out of the final countdown. Yeah. And if you guys have not seen us sing, make sure you go to our <laughs> vlog. It's the AEW All Out 2024 vlog for Rest Friends. It's on our channel. It's doing good numbers. Shout out to everyone leaving comments and engaging with it. We love you so much. Thank you to everyone who watches our vlogs and laughs along with us and cackles at everything we say. You are <laughs> a real one. But yeah, we were singing our little hearts out. And this match was so good. It was so yes. good. There was so much that happened. But okay, yes. we can talk about... Let, let's rate this before we talk about what happened afterwards because I think that's okay. crazier than what happened in the match. Okay. Um, oh, honestly, okay. This is going to get an 8.5 for Ooh, me. Okay. Um, it, it could was good. be higher with the simple fact that, again, this is another match that started off with amazing energy. Everyone mm -hmm. was clearly so excited for this match. Um, and they both came... Okay, the energy with Jack coming out and then the Young Bucks behind him. Which Beautiful. Jack, yeah, and then Jack had security and there was fire and flames. Great. Beautiful. Great. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Danielson comes out. Obviously, the energy was at a 10 because the people love him. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves the song. Yeah. Everyone was excited for the match. So it gets an 8.5 for me for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, And yeah. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> with your rating, and then we can talk about. No, yeah, it, it gets yeah, it gets an eight point five for me too. I think you know we were talking during this match a lot, but it's because mm -hmm. we were like, oh my god, you know, Jack Perry's really fighting Brian Danielson right now. Like when the four pillars of AEW were established, and I know a lot of them don't like being called pillars, but Jack Perry is a wrestler who was made in AEW. Yes, he did have his indie days, but like people will know Jack Perry for AEW. Yeah, he's and, an AEW original. Yeah. yeah, and he will be a fantastic champion two or three years from now. That's what I was telling you. I was like, these people are booing him right now. But when he's the champion, people are going to love him. Like, the AEW champion. Like, I know that there's still time, but Jack Perry has that qu those qualities in him. Yeah. So, for him to fight a guy like Brian Danielson, who's probably the greatest wrestler of all time, um, I was telling you, I'm like, you know what? It was probably um, Brian who was like, yeah, I'll fight Jack. You know, I'll, I'll do this. And it's Danielson's last couple matches for him to have one against Jack Perry is crazy. Um, yes. But, you know, way, way to put Jack Perry over. And um, even though Jack did not win, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just a really cool match to watch because you're like, man, you see all this potential in Jack. And Brian was really letting him have it. So yes. <laughs> it, it was really good. But, you know, the match ends. <laughs> and then um, we hear oh, Luchasaurus comes out, which, right? I want to yes. say it was Lucha. Yeah, Luchasaurus comes out. Yes. And we're like, what the hell is going on? And I'm like, oh, my God, Luchasaurus, Jack Perry. What's mm -hmm. gonna happen? Is this is this the next move? And it's not the next move because they then, have a little stare down. So we kind of think like yes, something's I'm gonna like, happen. I'm like, oh my god, are they getting back together? Like, yeah. it's, it's you know, this is the trio. Where's Marco? I was ready for Marco's stunt to come out. Restaurant. I know Mario's <laughs> gonna laugh. He's I'm gonna sure be like, were. he's like, okay, already, and Marco is not gonna come out. <laughs> Which shout outs to the Lucha Outsiders, Mario and Ryan and Leo. Fantastic. I'm ready for the new episode. I miss <laughs> them. I miss them. Ready for the new episode. So, Missed the episodes. Yes, guys. Go listen to Lucha Outsiders on literally anywhere you listen to this podcast. And also follow them on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Love them. So um, back to the betrayal of the night. Um, Christian comes out and we're like, oh, no. And Christian still has that contract, right? So I'm thinking, man, he's going to cash in it right now and fight, you know, Danielson. That I honestly wish that that's what happened because that would have been better. But... <laughs> So much was going on. 
the second Christian starts to come out, mm -hmm. we were looking everywhere. We're because... like, what, what's happening? Yeah, you're like confused because you're like, there's literally so much that can happen. And then we see Mox and you're like, oh my God, Mox here. Mox is here to save the day. Great. So Mox comes out and is like standing in front of Nick Wayne, in front of Christian, in front of Kill Switch, Luchasaurus. And we're like, okay, like what else? What else? And then Claudio and Yuta come out and pack. And now it's four against four. And you're like, this is it. Like, wow, this is going to be a next match. When? I don't know, but I was ready for it on Dynamite. And boy, oh boy, that did not happen. Um, you know, they they fight each other for a little bit. Everyone gets into the ring. They're cheering with Brian. We're cheering with Brian. We're like, oh my God, yay, this is so cute. I can't <laughs> wait to put this as my wallpaper tomorrow. It's going to be adorable. And um, everyone's hugging each other. And Claudio is right next to um, Danielson. He's holding up his arms. And Claudio, not uh, Claudio, Pac is holding Yuta, like hugging Yuta. Everyone's having a good old time. And then, you know, he's just grabbing onto Yuta for uh, a little longer than I thought he was going to be. And I'm like, this is interesting. What's what's happening here? And immediately I see Claudio uppercut Brian Danielson. Danielson's on the floor. And I'm like, <gasps> no freaking way. Because we I, I, I always thought it was maybe going to be Mox. Mox hasn't really been in that group. But, uh, you know, Mox was also hugging uh, Danielson, I guess, before this. And um, he gave him a hug. And I guess it was the the deadly hug because I had showed you a picture of like, oh, you know, Roman Reigns, before he turned on him, he he hugged him too. And I'm just like, what the heck? I didn't know this. I don't remember this. Yeah. I wasn't watching the Shield days. Craziness. Yeah. But the devastation, my friend, there was a plastic bag. Murder was almost being committed. Mm -hmm. um, Mox was choking Danielson on the floor. Y you know, um, Yuta was like crying. He was yelling, Claudio! And then Claudio comes back to Yuta and like pushes his face. And it's, rest friend, I was so sad. The end of the Blackpool Combat Club is like, I, I lived through that whole faction. Yeah, 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 you did. You you saw it be born. Yes. You saw it when it was in labor. I was there. <laughs> coming, coming out. You were literally, yes. I was there when the members were being established. Mm -hmm. Like, when they recruited Yuta, when they added Claudio after Brian Danielson was uh, injured, and he mm -hmm. could, like, what the hell was going on? I rest mm -hmm. friend. I was a little pissed. <laughs> but I was more sad that I was pissed. Because the day before on Collision, I had worn my Forged in Combat shirt. Mm -hmm. I was almost going to wear my Blackpool Combat Club jacket. And now what? <laughs> Damn, rest friend. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but you know what? Rest friend. <laughs> they gave us a whole novella, rest friend. And I, like, I can't complain. I'm sad for you. I'm sad for Danielson because that was crazy Betrayal. to witness. Yes. That was so crazy to witness. I'm so thankful they did that here in Chicago because to be there in person. <laughs> <laughs> to be there in person, that was pretty cool. Rest friend, to thing... me, that was even more disrespectful that you did it in Chicago. <laughs> you couldn't even wait to dynamite? That's crazy. Oh my goodness. Craziness. Oh my gosh, Rest friend. friend, and you know what? Let's talk about Wheeler Yuta, who is also one of my top you, five favorite wrestlers. You go ahead and talk about Wheeler Yuta. Absolute fave while I'm wearing the Bad Bitches for Yuta shirt. So, which you can buy at um, Wrestling Wind Down. So head over there, guys, buy that. <laughs> but um, let's talk about Yuta because he is, I guess, yes, they were choking out Brian Danielson, but the role that Yuta was playing here is very, very important because they didn't even let him in the ring. I don't think they even took him seriously enough to do anything to him. They left him untouched, right? Yeah. Pac was just kind of holding him back. Claudio didn't really, like, pay attention to him, which interesting to see how we're going to go forward because him and Claudio and Pac are the champions. So what's going to happen here? Like, are they just going to kick him out? <laughs> like, right. wh like, where do we go from here? And yeah. um, I guess I tried to see this as a positive, you know, Yes, Yuta was getting cheered in Chicago on Collision, which was crazy. And then he was also getting cheered um, in his match before this. So I'm like, okay, Chicago loves Yuta. Facts, mm -hmm. period. We do. But <laughs> I was like, maybe this is what Yuta needs, right? He really built himself up as a member in the Blackpool Combat Club. But he, I feel like 
it, much like a reality show, like a big brother or a survivor, like you make alliances, but a lot of people know that they're not at the top of the alliance, that they are like at the very bottom. And I feel like that's what kind of always happened with Yura. He was always the one getting pinned, even mm -hmm. though he was sometimes getting big pins, like he was winning those matches. So um, I think that maybe we're headed towards he's going to have a full on baby face, full on people are going to love Wheeler Yura um, run. And there is a spot for him to be a singles competitor and to be fantastic. So I'm, I'm excited for him. I don't know what's going to happen with Claudio now and Mox. They might make a Blackpool Combat Club 2.0 with just evil people. We talked about the addition of Marina. And I know that Blackpool Combat Club always mentioned Jamie Hayter as someone mm -hmm. that they would want in the group. So mm -hmm. now that Marina's in there, Interesting to see the role that she will play. We know that she's violent. We know that she wrestles with no shoes. I am like 50-50 on Marina. I feel like... No shoes, no socks, okay? No shoes, no socks, no service. That's what it's giving. So I I don't know what's going to happen with her, but she still, she still has to win me over. There is an essence of Blackpool Combat Club there because, yes, they're supposed to be violent. They're supposed to be mean. But... Rest friend. <laughs> I know, rest friend. I'm so sorry. I mean, first of all, going back to what you were saying, I hope that Yuda gets all those things you talked about. His sing he he could have an amazing singles run. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think that it would be better for him to stick with Danielson mm -hmm. just because I do think he's a better uh baby face than he can be. He never yeah. really gave me heel, even though of course he did a very, very great job of standing behind Claudio all the time or when he had to have his single matches, he's done, he's held it up very well. He's doing very, very good. Um, but I do think the way that they did the whole uh, Todo lo que pasó on Saturday, it worked very well. The way that Pac immediately held him back after Claudio uppercut Danielson beautiful chef's kiss the way Pac was holding him back the way the old uh, restaurant was so crying. so novella like it was the ultimate betrayal like beautiful beautiful like they i don't know if they practice again i don't know if they practiced that or they just talked about it but the whole thing was beautiful <laughs> literally <laughs> una novella you think literally. they you think they rehearsed it before or like they got backstage and claudia was like <laughs> oh man i can't believe you yelled out for me and you know like i improvised that i improvised that whole line <laughs> Like, or, right, or maybe they improvised at a yeah. that restaurant. Was, that was great, though. That was great. I know you were in the in the crowd, devastated, mm. crying, covering your face. Yes. Tu cara estaba un poquito rojo. Like, first friend, first friend, you, you felt my heartbeat. Do you remember? Your, yes, your heartbeat was very, very fast. Yes. You were going through it. You were really going through it. And also, guys, but... watch that on our vlog. I also, um, I a lot of our reactions I got in, in the vlog, guys. So <laughs> yes. definitely go over there because it was intense. Riz friend, something that took me out from our vlog was <laughs> while we were watching that happen, I look, I look honestly very devastated. I look like that shit was so real and I was extremely devastated. Riz friend, one thing that got me, I was I was editing it and uh, watching it back. And then when I'm like turning the camera while they're holding back Yuda, <laughs> you're like, Riz friend, they're killing him. <laughs> I couldn't get over the fact that there was a literal bag. Like, his head was literally in the bag. That's so crazy. <laughs> we didn't see any holes. His head was in a bag. That shit was crazy. Restaurant, but 10 out of 10, I think, for me, for this backstory, because I have never been more invested in the Blackpool Combat Club. Now, we I mean, I'm sure it's not going to be called that. Honestly, John Moxley, you need a new name. Because I'm going to call William Regal. <laughs> this feels illegal. You can't keep Blackpool Combat Club. You can't Combat keep Blackpool Combat Club. No. No, no, no. And I just go back to, like, the meet and greets rest friend with Claudio I and Yuda. Know. When Claudio was like, are you wearing a bedazzled Yuda shirt? And then they, like, love each other. Like, they truly are, like, brothers. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I yeah. can't wait for Wednesday. I can't wait for... Um, dynamite because I just need to know where this story is going next. But I'm entertained, rest friend. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's one that one thing's for sure. Is they're really, really, really entertaining us. That was amazing. Yeah. I cannot wait to see what happens. I'm so sorry for your corazoncito. I know you're still sad about that. Thank you. Um, but you know what, rest friend? I mean, get the police. 
Uh, at least, at least we enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm. You know what? I'm hoping Yuta gets all the love that he deserves now because if I know the men will say, "Oh, fuck Wheeler Yuta," the girlies love Wheeler Yuta. I don't know if you know this. We Tum- love Wheeler Yuta. Okay. The Tumblr girlies wild over Yuta. Really? Yes. Craziness. I'd be so scared to like stuff on Tumblr because I don't want people to find my page. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if this is uh, someone I know in disguise, you know? Yeah. You're like, I don't know about this one. <laughs> because they, because I get, I don't see anything about Yuta, but of course I get hangman posts. Oh, yeah. And sometimes they say under are a little bit unhinged. Then I'm like, I can't oh. like this. I don't know who's going to, you know who, who, who you know created who, this. You know who be on Tumblr? Mm. Matt Jackson. You're so right. Because he the other day he posted something and he was like mewing and he had like his... A little chicken or whatever, and someone was like, "How do you know that? How do you no, know what that word yes. is?" <laughs> I, I, restaurant. No, I, I forgot what he said one time, or or was it him and Nick? I don't know, but it for sure was Matt. And I was like, "He's on Tumblr." Besides the whole bot, the whole pictures that he said that girls on Tumblr have pictures of him and Nick shirtless or something like oh, that, or God. that the Tumblr Tumblr folks would like this. I think they did it on a. Before they ended their YouTube show with uh, BTE, I believe they did like a little shoot on BTE, something about Tumblr people. That's and I was so like, funny. okay, how do you know this? Because you're <laughs> obviously on Tumblr. So, restaurant, you brought up Hangman. Let's get into this main event. I think we covered all the matches, right? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about this um, Hangman and Swerve Strickland match, which they said when the lights go out, I thought the match was going to be like lights out, like the whole arena's like lights were going to be out because the ring did have uh, the ring. The cage had lights in there. So I'm like, oh, that's so smart. So people can still see what's going on. They'll leave the lights in the cage on and just kind of dim the now arena lights. I don't know if they had access to dim the lights instead of just turning them off. I don't know if they figured it would be best camera wise because, you know, cameras get grainy in the dark. So yeah. I don't know like what, you know, that was. But um. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> this match. Um, Let's start with the intro. Okay, so, so Prince Nana comes out with uh, Swerve. And as soon as the cage starts lowering down, they att- uh, Swerve is attacking Hangman. And Prince Nana is like, getting tables out from under the ring. He's getting storage boxes. He's getting um chairs like he was honestly the mvp before the the match started because he was he was providing all of the weapons for the match yeah um um i looked back at the match mm -hmm. and i i really do think both of these men were trying to decapitate each other's heads in the beginning because i was like was that on purpose or not so then when i went back to watch it um I'm like, no, it literally looks like Swerve puts Hangman there at the edge of the ring. Like trying as the cage is coming coming down. down. Yes, yes. So that the cage can decapitate Hangman. And then Hangman kind of does it in return. He's like, okay, motherfucker, if I'm not moving, you're not moving. Mm -hmm. Um, Until Nana pushes them in, right? Prince Nana pushes them in. Uh, That part alone for me was like, whoa, this is going to be crazy. This is going to be so fucking crazy. But also knowing how unhinged Hangman is. I'm like, I have no idea. I it, I was like, I have no idea how this match is going to go. I don't know what's going to happen in this cage. Yeah. It was very unexpected for me. Everything that happened, I absolutely did not think it was going to happen. There was two big chair shots to the head. One to Hangman, one to Swerve, which, yes, our reactions are <laughs> in that vlog. It's like mm-hmm. the first five seconds, that chair shot that you hear is us reacting to Hangman giving Swerve that chair shot. Um the winning chair shot. Yes, the winning chair <laughs> shot. I l- literally, this match was so violent. I don't think I've ever seen a match like this in person or ever in general. Um, yes, I have been to GCW cage, uh, like like death matches and stuff. I've seen the light tubes, which is why Willow's light tube like didn't like stir me um, in like a scary way. Yeah. But uh the cinder block we have seen before in the in the match that they had, which I'm like, that was actually like a nice callback to have the cinder block again because you know what's happened on that before. 
But when Hangman got thrown onto the cinder block and immediately started to bruise, that was insane. It's like when you go outside and you scrape your knee and immediately you get that, like, <laughs> you know, all that texture in your skin and the blood. It was disgusting because they kept showing it. <laughs> and <laughs> as the seconds progressed, like, it got redder. <laughs> Yes, it, I was going to say, it was very visible. That's my, that's my güerito. That always happens to him. He ha, he gets a little slap on the chest. Yeah, está la manita right away, you know? <laughs> um, we got to see um, the, the table spot, too, which was crazy. Uh, the needle restaurant. That's what I want to talk to you about, the needle. What did the, you think? I, <laughs> the, the moment I realized it was a needle, I literally, not many things what the fuck me. Um, the cinder block, obviously, what the fuck. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with him? But then that needle, I was like, this is a whole different level of unhinged. A needle, he pops it out, puts it through Swerve's cheek, and I'm like, what? Um, I didn't know what to think about the needle spot restaurant. That was crazy. It was, that was insane because I was like, first of all, it was what's, different. I was like, what's in there that he's like pushing in? I actually thought what they were going to do, which is not how needles work. Um, <laughs> um, I thought the needle was going to pop out of the other side of his cheek. And I'm like, that would be a crazy visual. I thought that was going to be maybe that would have been too much. But That's what I thought was going to happen, too. Yeah. I was I was waiting for the needle to poke out. And then it didn't. And I was like, oh, OK. Uh, but also, Hangman took off Swerve's grill. He also powerbombed him into You're the cinder right. block at one point. This match was insane in the best way. In the best Beautiful. way. I, I, can, I can definitely see, though, how people were upset and they did not like it. And I don't think it's child-friendly. I don't think it's a child-friendly match. But I've said before, I don't think AEW is a child-friendly show. Um, sometimes the jokes are a little too much. So, like, you got kids scissoring without knowing what scissoring is. Like, like there's, there's different levels, right? And I also think the violence is a little bit more. I don't think it's for kids. Because I feel like there's also a stigma of like, oh, WWE shows. Absolutely, you could take your kids to a WWE show. You know nothing crazy is going to happen like this. But you should know going to an AEW show that they do kind of press against that line of like what's absolutely crazy and what's not. This was very much like a GCW deathmatch kind of kind of vibe. And I didn't mind that. Again, we've, we've been to GCW shows. We've seen these kind of matches that are like extra, that are crazy. So um, it wasn't yeah. anything new to me, but I do yeah. get where some people were like, this is insane. But Hangman has done these types of matches before. Swerve has done these types of matches before. So why did you think going into this one <laughs> in an unsanctioned match where literally Justin Roberts was like, AW will not be held responsible for anything that happens in this match that you were going to get a kitty friendly match? <laughs> exactly. I, I don't rest, friend. I like you. I mean, unlike you, I don't understand mm -hmm. why people get so upset. Um, it's none of our bodies on the line. Mm -hmm. It's, I, I, I really don't. I don't understand why it makes anyone upset. I understand why people don't like it. Mm -hmm. That's different, of course. I don't expect for people to, like, love the blood and the violence. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not mad at the people like you that don't like it. I, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. I don't understand why people got to complain about it. I don't understand why people are be like, we don't need this. You don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't enjoy that. There's people that do enjoy it. For me, it's like, I, because I don't hate it, I'm for it. I'm open to it, to watching it. I don't care. But I'm also very like, I don't know if naive would be the right word, mm. but I feel like I'm just naive and I'm just like, well, they know what they're doing. It's their bodies. They, they're the professionals here. If they want to fucking drop a cinder block on their heads in front, I mean, no, please don't do that. But whatever the fuck they want to do in there, as much violence as they want to bring and, and show us, I'm for it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, that's all I have to say, to be honest. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I get you. Ooh. Um. With all of our thoughts being said, I, this was the match of the night. For sure. For me, it definitely was yeah. a match of the night, yeah. Yeah, no, this, um, no, I'm saying this was the match of the night. Um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I... <sighs> Go ahead, Rishwan. I was no, going to bring this, up something else. The, as, as crazy as an insane was that this match was, it was a great match. And not mm -hmm. saying that just because a match is crazy and insane that it can't be 
a great match because this was the best match of the night. The story that was going into it. Swerve had uh, his house burned down by Hangman. Like, yeah. the buildup was insane. And like I said, you know, Hangman has done these types of matches before. Swerve has done these types of matches before. Yes, there were headshots um, in this, which a lot of people feel a lot of ter- different ways about it. Those I am, are pretty I am, terrible. I yeah. am one person that thinks that you should not have those um, because you don't know, like, what happens to these people's brains. Like, you, you don't mess with that stuff. But mm-hmm. again, if they both agreed to it, why like we can't say like oh my god that's terrible tony Khan, why did you approve this if they wanted to do that if hangman and swerve were like yeah we want to do this why would like we can't tell them anything they are the professionals they are the ones that are in the ring they do this every single day so we are no one to tell them anything um we have a whole bunch of crazies there's uh, darby allen and most of the time, I'm not saying that there aren't people that complain because I do see people complain. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, Darby doesn't get as much shit when it comes to the violent and crazy things he does mm-hmm. compared to what other wrestlers do. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I guess because people are um, kind of like used to it from Darby. They kind of get numb to like I what also it is. think people see it as like, oh, he's cool as fuck. Mm-hmm. And everyone else is like, well, you should be wrestling. You shouldn't be doing that. Mm-hmm. Mm, at least that's what I see from, yeah, yeah. from, from fans on the internet. Um... But either way, I mean, you either enjoyed this match with all that it came with or you didn't. Or you and that's didn't, okay. Yeah. It's, o- it's okay to not like it. It's okay to be squirmish about blood. It's okay mm-hmm. to be squirmish about needles. Our friend who we saw after the show, she said that the needle part was the part that for her was like, no, <laughs> was because it? she's scared of needles. Mm-hmm. And I get that there's so many people that have a fear of needles. Mm-hmm. Um, there's people that have fear of blood. So I get it. I do get it when people don't like it. But yeah, to it's, willingly, it's, it's a different type of wrestling. We do like mm-hmm. it's not, not going to be everyone's style. I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. But to willingly throw so much hate or shade at it when you decided to watch it or you decided to be there after knowing mm-hmm. about it, it's like okay, we fucking relax. Yeah, people people relax. need to relax. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, listen. The first time I went to a GCW show, I was terrified. There were so many tables. There were so many light tubes. There were so many explosions. People had to cover their mouths in the front row. They had to cover their eyes because the little glass particles could could harm you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. Let me step back. <laughs> um, but this match was fantastic. And this match is going to go down in history as one of the greatest hangman swerve matches. And I'm sure they, they love that. And you know what's um, crazy is that these guys are like forever bonded, just like the Young Bucks and the Lucha yeah. Brothers. Like they are going to have matches forever. Same thing like FTR and the Young Bucks, you know, these are history making rivalries. These yes. are going to go down in the books as like they have the craziest matches, the craziest storylines. And yes. I, I love that for them, that they're always going to be tied to one another because they have proven to have great matches every time they're in the ring. I love, yes, and I love that for them too. Yes, I love, they said yes to them. <laughs> I love that for them too because Swerve and Hangman were two guys that, in very different ways, um, a lot of the fans didn't believe in Swerve because he came from WWE and they thought he only belonged in WWE. And Hangman, for, I mean, I do see some fans not being fans of Hangman before the whole thing with CM Punk happened. And then after the CM Punk situation happened, a lot of people didn't like him either. But then they started the storyline together and a lot of fans started to pick up on both of them. And okay, Swerve is great. Hangman is great. They can obviously deliver. Give us, what, three great, amazing matches. Mm -hmm. And this last match, not saying it's the last one between Mm -hmm. them because, like, I agree with you. They're going to be bonded forever. How do you create such a huge story and then just let it go? I doubt yeah. that's going to happen. I mean, Swerve broke into Hangman's house. It's no, it was in front. It's a huge was in front rivalry. of his baby. Yes. yes. Hangman burned his childhood, burned Swerve's childhood home. Like, this is a story that you could never let go of. It's something like, how do I, what, what's a big I'm, story I'm that thinking we can about like. To? Any any feud with John Cena, like John Cena versus Randy Orton, John Cena and Randy Edge. Randy Orton, like, absolutely, you're right. It's something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it's always going to be like, man, sometimes I'm going to have to work with you, but I know that I don't like you. And everyone mm-hmm. knows that we don't like each other. And everyone's mm-hmm. seen the history. So I'm just, I'm excited for their future because I know like maybe a year or two from now, they'll have to team with each other and they might join forces for good and that team is going to be insane, you know, or they, they, even if it's just for one match, but this was, this is probably qualifies 
again, Lucha Outsiders, but they have like a, the Luchis at the end of the year where they like do like the best matches or whatever. Mm-hmm. This is probably one of the matches of the year. Top mm-hmm. five easily. Top three, maybe. This might be the match. Craziness. No, it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's so good because, again, just the history with it alone, it's just like, it's beautiful. Um, I okay. Another thing, another connection mm-hmm. with with um, with both Hangman and and Swerve. And Swerve. Mm-hmm. Also, at the end, you kind of got to. We don't know exactly what was going through Hangman's mm-hmm. mind. Clearly, right? We can't read his mind, but you kind of start to wonder, like, okay, did is he starting to feel a little bit guilty that you know about everything that he's done to Swerve? including burning his childhood home down or or what's going on because he was looking at the face tunnel at the baby face tunnel and at the heels tunnel like which one am i gonna leave out of so you kind of wonder like what's going through his head is he does he think he did a good thing is he like this is absolutely what i had to do is he gonna start to regret it i am really excited to see what kind of hangman we're gonna get from now on because i'm enjoying crazy unhinged him um, but I want to see, is he going to start breaking character a little bit? Um, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I think right now, AEW is at a spot where it can go up again. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. They're coming up on, on their fifth year anniversary and they're about to sign new deals. Word is that, you know, since WWE is not on Fox anymore, that maybe, Fox is also in play. That's something that's being reported. So with the TNT TV or the Warner Brothers Discovery, there could also be a Fox deal. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, this is just exciting. This is this is a real exciting time for AEW. And we know that AEW pay-per-views always deliver. And I was just kind of worried how the separation between All Out and All In being only like yes. two weeks apart, how that was going to affect it. We saw the numbers in person when we went to Collision that there was not as many seats available and seats were open. Um, so we were also kind of talking about like, we wonder how, how Tony feels, you know, only mm-hmm. seeing like half the arenas fill up or seeing the open spots or if he doesn't care because he's got his money either way. You know, that's something that's always interested me is like finances and how how everyone's getting paid and how much they're actually profiting and what it costs to put the show on. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we can have AEW for another five years Absolutely. and that we get more great wrestling shows and talent. And Tony Khan said it to our faces that all out is always going to be in Chicago. So <laughs> he said, I, I don't remember hearing all out, but I do remember him saying that AEW stays, is staying Chicago, in Chicago. Right. That's what, so us, I, that's took what that, I took it as interpretation yes, yes. on my own. Was that okay? This is all out. Well, tomorrow's all same. out. He's always going to be here. That's what I took it as. Yeah. Same, my friend. <laughs> same. Because he does, usually he does come out and say that. He mm-hmm. does say that, you know, all out is always going to be in Chicago. That's where it was born because of all in. So that that's where all out's going to stay. Yeah. Um, so that's also how I took it. But I I also hope, best friend, that we get five more years and more because I mean I'm an a, I'm an AW mark. I've been here since day one. I yeah. want them to succeed. I want them to um, go back to what they used to be because there was a moment where it was so hot and it was so exciting as a fan to see that. And I don't want to see them fail. I don't want to see any wrestling company fail. I'm rooting for them. Um, I'm rooting for Hangman always. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to him because also we learned with this feud that he didn't tell us but Swerve told us that he's a dad again like he became a dad for the second time that was crazy so the fact that he came out here and destroyed the shit out of his body as a new dad again like he's you know he just had a baby well his wife just had a baby that's crazy to me I would be so pissed if I was his wife <laughs> how because dare you go out there you know what like, oh, nada. yeah he's not gonna want to do anything oh I can't <laughs> Did you not see the match I, I had? I can't hold a baby. Have you seen me? <laughs> Have you seen my bag? I'm dead. I'm dead. All right, Rushman. Final final thoughts on on the the show in its entirety. I'm actually wondering, you know, all in is scheduled for earlier next year in 2025 than it was like in September. So I'm thinking that Tony Khan might just move back um all out to Labor Day. Which was, I, I think, hope so. I think was a smarter choice that they did it last year because people were able to travel. Um, you had things at the United Center and at Wintrust. So it was just more accessible for people. 
And I think that was a smart move. So I'm hoping that next year we'll get it in Labor Day. I would love for Tony Khan to give us what Cody and the Bucks gave us for All In in 2018. Mm. That excitement of having the whole weekend to do activities because they had StarCast. Mm -hmm. Even though there was only one show, we literally only had All In on Saturday. There was no other show. Um, they still had a three-day weekend with StarCast. So I would love that back. I, I, I want that vibe again of having like a fan fest, a StarCast, where we can have a whole cute little weekend, uh, Labor Day weekend with our friends, with our wrestling friends. That's yeah. what I would like. Besides the pay-per-view on Labor Day weekend, I would like some fan ex cool fan experiences. Yeah. No, I'm there. I'm right there with you. That's fine. So pay-per-view overall, what would you give it out of 10? Hmm. I think for me, this might be a 10 pay-per-view. <sighs> Even though there was one match I... that I did not prefer. I'm going to I'm going to give it I want to give it an 11, but I oh, know people are like, oh my goodness, friend, it's bitch. our show. You can give it an 11. I, I know, but I'm really trying to think, like, am I just giving it an 11 because it's Hangman, or am I giving it an 11, 11 because it was that great? Because it was that good. It was that good, restaurant. We didn't even drink this pay-per-view. That's how good it was. That is so true. We didn't You're even leave our correct. seats. We got our ice cream before the show started, and we did not move. No, we did not. We actually sat. Yep. We stayed sat. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it an 11 then, just because that is how my heart feels. <laughs> Period. <laughs> All righty, guys. Well, yeah, I, I give it a give it a 10. Uh, it was a really, really great show. Like I said, if you haven't seen it, head over to our vlog. Watch it there. I know I was going to talk shit about merch at the end, but I feel like I already covered that. We kind of did, in yeah. In between our, our thing, but... um. Yeah, if, let us know your thoughts, guys. Message us, leave comments on our videos, head over to Instagram, literally comment on everything that we have. We appreciate you guys. We're literally getting so many new subscribers. So if this is the first time that you're listening to the podcast, welcome. We will, we're will. we always here for the shenanigans. <laughs> oh my God, you're so right. You just reminded me that you mentioned someone commented from Australia. Yeah. And I can't forget that. I keep bringing this up. I'm like... I don't know why that's so crazy to me. I'm like, what? So if you're listening, our fan, our new our new listener from Australia. I'm, sorry, I'm gonna call you a fan. Our new listener from Australia, shout outs to you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm so excited. I feel like Russ Friends has been growing so in like crazy numbers recently. And I just thank you guys for always supporting us. For our new supporters, welcome. We're so excited to have you guys on board as Rust Friends. And yeah, we we love thank you guys. Thank you for listening to us and liking that because <laughs> I don't know. I feel my feet, my feelings feel validated. You know, yeah. I talk about how I feel about wrestling and the fact that people get on here and agree. It's like, thank you so fucking much. Mm -hmm. That really, you know, it makes you feel like we're all so different. We all have different feelings towards wrestling. We all have, we're all fans of different wrestlers, yeah. have different opinions. And the fact that there's people that, um, What's it called that that you can connect with? Yeah, with this? it's so much fun. So yeah, I'm with Rush Friend. Thank you guys so much. Um, every single comment, every single like, every single view is highly appreciated. Yeah, and we we love you guys, like we said, and thank you so much for sticking with us for this hour forty five minute stream <laughs> <laughs> for, for this pod. We appreciate it. Like I said, thank you guys so much, and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet. But Otherwise, we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Perfect. Restaurant, we killed that shit.